Hello, and thanks for joining Arctic IT. This is the first presentation on our latest product, Tribal Platforms 4.0. Tribal Platforms offers a secure and convenient way to communicate with tribal members and provide services through a suite of service applications, all built on Microsoft Dynamics 365. Presenting today is Brian Schmidt, Pre-Sales Solution Architect at Arctic IT, and Rob Jacobs, our Business Development Executive for Tribal Sector. After a brief presentation, Brian will be diving into an interactive demo of the application, and then we'll open the floor for questions. So with that, I will turn the presentation over to Rob. Thanks so much, Joanne, and thanks everyone for attending today. I know you guys are busy, and we really appreciate you taking time on your busy days to uh, watch our webinar. Today, we'd like to introduce you to Tribal Platforms 4.0. It's our newest suite for Dynamics 365 for tribes. I think after the presentation, um, you know, I think you really enjoy it, and I think you'll find some value in it. Um, to go over today's agenda, I want to do a quick introduction to Arctic IT. We want to talk about legacy versus cloud systems. We want to talk about Travel Platforms 4.0, Dynamics 365 and Power Platform, Travel Platform suite of applications. Do a demo for you right quick, and also do a, a quick uh, question and answer session. So feel free to pop your questions into the chat box. Um, Arctic IT is offering a partnership that works for you. So Arctic IT, um, to give you a little background, we have over 17 years of uh, community engagement with tribal communities. Um, we have over 75 at this point, uh, tribal entities across the United States we work with. We specialize in technology for tribal governments and casinos, and we're 100% native owned by Doi Unlimited, Alaska Native Corporation, and we proudly represent over 36 Alaska Native villages. And lastly, we're a Microsoft Gold partner. There's only a, a very small percentage of Microsoft partners that are gold partners, and we've been a gold partner for over 15 years. That's very important to us. And um, to give you a little background about that partnership, um, anytime Microsoft has a tribal pro program or project they, they have to um, work on, they always go Arctic IT to implement that for them. Give you a little bit about the more information about the partnership. So at Arctic IT, you know, we have um, industry experts. We have Dynamics MVPs on our team. Microsoft Certified Technicians on the team and Dynamics 365 Fast Track Solution Architects on the team. Like I mentioned, we're Alaska Native Corporation, 8A certified. Um, we have tribal domain government expertise. We're very um, keen on sovereignty. We know the importance of sovereignty and we work well in uh, the tribal space because of that. And we have a national presence. And um, the reason why we chose Microsoft is because, you know, they put billions and billions of dollars into their R&D research development, especially when security. So they have versatility of a platform. And very, they have the productivity, you know, with Word, Excel, Access, and all those those um, solutions, very dependable, and they're at the forefront of the modern modern workplace. And what we mean by that is they're allowing people to work from home using Teams and other solutions. Here's a quick splash of some of our tribal clients. As you can see, we work with some of the largest in the country: Seminole Tribal, Florida, Mohegan Sun, Mississippi Band of Choctaw, um, Sequan, the Porch Creek Indians, to name a few. You can kind of take a quick second to look at those. And here's um, uh, from one of our partners at Mohegan, George Wood. He's a very um, trusted client. And um, he's Arctic IT has become a very partner with our team and just fills in perfectly where we need help. And we work with him hand in hand and his team and, and, and we've had a good relationship for many, many years. Okay, let's talk about IT modernization. Here's some of the challenges that tribes face. I used to work many years ago in tribal housing, uh, youth programs, and Indian energy. Uh, we have siloed systems in Indian country. So that means that, OK, I'm, I'm in housing. I have a file cabinet for housing files. Then the Indian, Indian energy has them for, for you know, energy files. And every pretty much every department with a grant has a different set of data. That, that's called siloed systems. Um, with that comes duplicate data. So I might have an address and phone number for a client over on my side in housing that filled out an application three or four years ago, but now the energy department has an application that's fresh. And they've changed addresses or phone numbers since then. So I have data on my side, and they have a different set of data. So those, those data don't communicate. Those departments don't communicate, and we don't mesh together well. Um, the manual processes. So a lot of our uh, tribal members and tribal tribes around the country still use paper, a ton of paper. And, you know, we're, we're indigenous, so I'm indigenous myself. We really care about the environment. So we're wasting a lot of paper and, you know, writing down a lot of notes. And a lot of these things can get lost in translation. You know, if I have a file on my, my desk and I handwritten all the notes 
and there's energy department looking for the same file I have it on my desk you can't really find the file and it takes months and maybe the client has to come back and fill out a new application so that really doesn't help the travel um, members any um, insufficient reporting so with that you know when it comes to writing grants for instance you know if I have to write a grant say for ICWA and it takes me a thousand data sets I have to go through these manual filed you know files and, and pull out that data manually and write down the note, write down it in the spreadsheet or whatever, and then turn that information into a grant. It could take months. Um, so that's what I mean by institution reporting. A system like ours makes it easy to pull reports in real time. And also security issues. Um, big problem with legacy systems, you know, is that, you know, you do have security issues. What if a travel member doesn't like another travel member? They can leak their information to the, to the community. Um, what if uh, you have a disgruntled employee like it has happened in some tribes where a disgruntled employee works with an outside entity, give passwords away, and then they, they're they hacked, and then they're held for ransom. And we've had a lot of that happen in Indian country the last few years, unfortunately. Okay, let's compare legacy systems with cloud. So when I say legacy, I mean, you know, what tribes have been using in the past. Usually it's, you know, you have software on a computer in your office, and the servers are in your computer or in your office. Um, you know, they're, they're um, vulnerable to, to issues like natural disasters or just for instance, like COVID. COVID really hurt our people because people had to go home. Travel members come, come, couldn't come into the office. So all that information, all that data is sitting in a server in the travel office and nobody could get serviced and you couldn't work from home either. Um, they're costly. You know, you have all the, that equipment you have to buy and all the software you have to buy and keep upgrading software every single year. It, it's, it's costly. Um, usually you have to remote access via the, the remote desktop. And the problem is, you know, some reservations have poor and shoddy um, uh, Wi-Fi. So it's hard to do that. Um, call through support. Some of these systems are, you know, one-offs. So one company makes the program and sells it to you. And you have to rely on that company all the time to get service. And those things can add up. Those costs can add up. And like I mentioned before, the data security risks are, are a problem. But with the cloud systems that we offer, you have business continuity. Like I said, one set of data that every single department can pull from so nobody has wrong data and it's, it's easy you don't lose a file because it's all stored in one place in the cloud for you um you have um you know redundancy the cloud mechanisms so you have copies among copies copies saved you can have a copy on your laptop you can have a copy saved in the cloud so you don't lose information in case you have a problem where you lose power or something um and we were empower a remote workforce and that's been huge in any country the last few years like I mentioned, COVID, and that's where they used to. Nobody wanted to have the, the cloud conversation because of sovereignty. They were afraid that some other casino may may steal their data, for instance. Mm -hmm. But in this case now, people are realizing, hey, listen, the cloud is the way to go. It's more secure, easier to use, and we can service our members from anywhere, and they can also apply for um, programs from anywhere, comfort of their home without having to worry about going into the office and potentially exposing somebody to COVID. And um, you know, it requires efficient internet connectivity. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Brian Smith, the man of the hour, um, to speak to you about Travel Platforms 4.0. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate that uh, introduction and uh, brief overview of, of why we've chosen uh, Microsoft as our, as our solution partner. Uh, so what I'd like to do now is do a little deeper dive uh, into why, you know, one of, one of the main uh, flagship products that Microsoft has um, made available for clients uh, and customers is this product called Dynamics 365. Uh, it is a platform and a suite of products that uh, is available as a software as a service uh, in, in their Microsoft uh, secured cloud uh, environments uh, that, uh, that provide some significant benefits uh, for us to build our platform or our suite of applications on top of that platform. One of the big elements is the mobility capability uh, to make sure that you can access your data uh, anytime, any place on any device. Uh, while keeping the data secured, uh, me managing you know the the data and and encryption so that it's secure when it's at rest and while it's in transit, so that you're not uh, potentially exposing sensitive information for your tribal members. Uh, it's all keeping it secured uh, in a data center uh, that only you can control and you can give out or give access to uh, with your explicit permission. So that's a really important aspect, uh, and that's something that we bring into um, uh, build into the solution right away from the beginning uh, is to make sure that it's a security first application. Using the cloud lifecycle management 
you know, from being able to migrate the data from your legacy systems that you have through the, the life cycle of upgrades and maintenance and so forth, uh, that's a really important aspect to, to not only get the data into these secured uh, environments, but maintain it, uh, upgrade it, uh, and allow you the flexibility to uh, adjust the solution as time goes forward and technology changes uh, to make sure that it's still available for you uh, using the latest technology. And that's a really important aspect of, of one of the reasons why we've chosen Dynamic 365. Uh, and then <clears throat> using the, the feature enhancements and the uh, usability uh, of Dynamic 365, they built, uh, Microsoft has built the user interface uh, to match uh, very similar capabilities <clears throat> that's available today in Office 365. Uh, so what we're trying to do is, is mimic it and, and reduce that learning curve for your end users. When they're familiar with those Office 365 application suite, uh, they can use Dynamic 365 in a very similar and familiar way. Uh, so therefore, thereby making it easier for your staff to, to climb that learning curve, uh, to take on and start working with these software as a service uh, business applications. So to build on now, what, you know, within that Dynamics 365 yeah, and the platform that it, that is provided by Microsoft, we also get to leisure the, the capabilities from, uh, because we're running on an Azure Cloud platform, uh, that provides our security uh, and the deployment uh, models that are uh, needed by your IT teams. Uh, and it's virtually you know, unlimited storage, but while uh, allowing you to pay for only what you use. Uh, that's an important aspect. So we use this to, to try and lower your total cost of ownership of the application and keep it current and secure uh, while taking advantage of all these platform uh, investments that Microsoft has made. Uh, plus the integration, uh, the new Dataverse uh, that is uh, the, the uh, Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform is built on allows us great capabilities to integrate uh, to other systems uh, that you may have or your finance system or whatever uh, to be able to uh, facilitate that ability to manage your historical data, but also keep that current data secured and integrated and synchronized where it needs to be. Uh, and that's de designed and, and architected according to your requirements. So that's really important aspect <clears throat> of why we've chosen this as a platform. Plus, like I mentioned, it's, it's integrated to, to uh, Microsoft 365, uh, which is the, the new name for the Office 365 suite. Uh, but that application suite, it's completely integrated for document management, uh, integration for your Outlook uh, items. Uh, and uh, the ability to integrate and create Excel documents, Word documents, et cetera. So it's really important that uh, that collaboration platform uh, is, is, a, is included as an aspect of the overall platform uh, that we make available to you. Uh, and that's part of the reason, another reason why we've selected Dynamics 3C5 as a, as a platform of choice. So with that, I wanna dive in <clears throat> to a little bit more of, of Tribal Platform 4.0. So on top of this Dynamics 365 platform and the Azure platform, we built a, a solution suite uh, uh, of applications uh, that, al that allows tribal organizations such as yourself uh, to be able to uh, collaborate, manage your member master database uh, and, and build or support business best practices uh, for your organization. And, and these are different applications that are available you can, uh, you know, we typically start with the enrollment uh, as the base application uh, so that you can start delivering and managing your membership uh, and then build on that, uh, build on that base, uh, adding, you know, the, the family wellness, which supports your family and child uh, case management systems, uh, your portal to enable your uh, tribal members to be able to engage, uh, you know, 24 hours through a, a secured portal uh, so they can manage their data and submit applications or apply for services that you might expose through the portal. Uh, another area that we've rece recently received, you know, great interest is tribal court. Uh, court systems uh, typically have been, uh, are working with legacy business applications. They aren't really serving the tribal uh, courts very well. Uh, so that's where uh, this is a, a new application offering that's become available. Uh, in the suite uh, that really has found some uh, great acceptance within uh, the tribal government space. And, and uh, they really love what the, it provides to them. 
and the distribution payments for managing both your recurring uh, payments that you make to your tribal members, and such as per capita or, or elder assistance, those kinds of things, or it can be one-off uh, payment uh, applications uh, that, that you perform or assistance payments that you provide to your members. Uh, so it's a flexible uh, application that allows you to uh, integrate, uh, potentially integrate to your finance system to streamline and automate that full uh, payment cycle uh, and be able to give uh, your, your finance organization great reporting uh, on who is getting those payments, how often, and see that complete history of those payments that have been uh, issued to those members. So there's, there's, these are the, the primary pieces uh, that are included today with Tribal Platforms 4.0. And, you know, Arctic IT is, is proud of what we built uh, with this application suite. And uh, we hope you uh, get a chance to really uh, take advantage of this, uh, of these applications. So with that, I want to switch gears and show a, a brief product demonstration. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to pop over here. All right, so the first thing you'll, you'll notice within Tribal Platform 4.0, so I'm gonna minimize this a little bit so you can see it. Uh, this is all in a browser. Uh, so there's no application that you need to install on your desktop. Uh, so that gives you the ability to access this, uh, you know, the Tribal Platform 4.0 from your desktop, from your mobile phone, from a tablet. Uh, we've even seen some cases where tribes have, have taken a, a laptop out to an event such as a powwow. Uh, and provided the ability, as long as you have internet access through a Wi-Fi hotspot or something like that, uh, they can update membership records, uh, you know, in the place where uh, you have tribal members congregating. Uh, so that, that's a great capability that uh, most other systems uh, don't allow because they're based in a box in your office. Uh, but because this is a cloud software as a service application, you know, the data is not kept locally on the device. It's kept in the, in the secured uh, storage of the subscription uh, and allows you access to that information through the browser on your device. And one aspect of that is the ability for this screen. You'll notice as, as I resize the screen, let's say I'm going to take the format of a, of a um, uh, tablet, uh, the size of the screen will automatically readjust uh, based on the screen size. Or I can bring this down to as small as maybe what it would look like uh, for a mobile phone. Uh, so I can click on my little controls uh, and scroll up and down to see the same information, but, the, but it detects that the browser has shrunk in such a way that it, it readjusts the presentation. Uh, so that's only the information, uh, you ex expose as much information as possible uh, for, the, the, um, uh, for the device that you're presenting this browser on. So that's a really important capability and why we say it's available on any device at uh, any time. Uh, so now what I'll do is I'll, I'll land here and we have this suite of applications. So I'll click up at the top navigation. And right now I'm logged in as an administrator. So I get to see all the applications. Uh, so you'll see the distribution payments, enrollment, family wellness, uh, tribal court and tribal staff. Uh, so there's two different aspects here. One is for the enrollment team. Uh, so that they can manage and maintain the enrollment data. Uh, and then the tribal staff. So let's say a department member outside of enrollment that wants access to that tribal member list, uh, they can have potentially read access. Uh, that's all they might want to do. And then the scenario there might be you want tribal police to have access to who is uh, an enrolled member uh, so they can pull up their name, phone number, uh, and maybe address uh, if they need to go visit that individual. Uh, so that's that's a, an important aspect to provide a, uh, an application specifically for the user role or the role of the person. Uh, and you can very tightly control the, the not only records or information that's visible to them, but whether they can edit it or just view it. And that's another reason why we've selected uh, the Microsoft platform uh, for these applications. So typically when you log in, you're presented with a dashboard. Uh, if I'm from here, uh, you have many different uh, navigation methods over on the side. So we might show their contacts, emergency contacts, their profiles, households, all these different elements uh, of that members uh, that, that enrollment would want to be able to show. Uh, so for example, I can start here and just show 
hey, here's a, a list of the members of the tribe all. So one key difference uh, with this application is that I can use this to actually create uh, live views in other applications. These are typically reports that you have to run uh, to go generate this information. Uh, so I can just filter this list and we call this a view that's a real time query into the data. Uh, so right now I'm seeing just those that are living, uh, but let's say I wanna see all active contacts and now I'm seeing all members and I'm seeing non-members. So that you might have non-members in here uh, for the purpose of, of uh, like a spouse or uh, somebody that is a non-member, you can capture them in the system, keep track of the, the fact that they are related to an individual that is a member, uh, but you don't necessarily need to track them as one of those specific members. So again, this is, this is really important uh, for you to be able to, you know, in a live mechanism, be able to pull up this information and view it uh, when you need it in a very responsive uh, interface. Now, if I can dive into a specific uh, contact or a tribal member record, I can have store their photo, I can capture all their demographic information about the individual and show an example here of, of the types of security that are available. Not only do I have access or control of the record level, uh, but I can actually have field level security. Because I'm an administrator, this key indicates that this field has field level security. Uh, so I can actually view and edit this field, uh, but this field, you'll notice that it's read only. Uh, that's the, indicated by the lock symbol. That means that I can view it, but I can't update or change that field. Uh, and, and in some cases, uh, if I'm not an administrator, uh, I might not be able to even see the social security number. As a staff person, I wouldn't see this field. All I'd see is the, the four digit social security number. So that's another level of security uh, that can be applied to records so that you can control very carefully the information that's, uh, that they can visit or, or read uh, uh, on, their, on a contact record or a member's record. And then you can use this as a way to look up uh, their household that they may be a member of, uh, their birth record, their death records, uh, and see that their snapshot of their primary address with their, a map of where that address is located. Uh, and then this activity in notes, this is available on virtually all the applications as having the ability to post comments or capture emails that were sent to or received from this individual, uh, capture phone calls, conversations that happened. I can create these notes and they're stored in a chronological uh, mechanism so that uh, you and your staff can view those comments uh, and you can filter those comments uh, however you choose uh, in this user interface to be able to filter that, that information. And quickly, and, and again, a, a pattern that we've used across the system is this notion of having uh, multiple records to be able to uh, track, for example, on, a, on an address. I can track their, all their address history uh, and, and other records such as uh, aliases, other names that the individual has gone by. I can keep track of their education history, um, what skills they have, certificates they've earned, uh, keep track of all their emergency contacts. Uh, so I can link this to maybe other systems or other people that are in the system. Uh, they may be tribal members or they may be non-members. Uh, so I can enter them and keep track of those contacts. Um, and plus all the other information that's available uh, related to this individual. Um, one aspect and one big uh, benefit the application provides is this notion of a household. Uh, and the household can capture, you know, in this case, Alicia as a, as a house, head of household. Uh, and in this case, we can track who are members of the household. And we designed this application to make sure that we're supporting the policies uh, that you have, for example, uh, she may be in a, a divorce situation, so she's a single mom, uh, and she's got the three kids in her household. Uh, if Stan, for example, uh, decides that uh, the dad, he's going to go stay with dad, uh, he could only be claimed in one household for the purposes of, of assistance or, or, uh, or, or other programs <clears throat> that are household dependent. Uh, so if, if he were going to go live with dad, he would have to be removed from this household and added to his dad's household. Uh, so that you can enforce those policies. And that was just an example of the business rules that we can build into the system uh, to make sure that we're managing the data in a way that meets your requirements, uh, following some best practices, 
uh, and and uh, keeping the data secured uh, and consistent. Okay, so that's a, a brief overview uh, of the enrollment. There's lots more functionality in here uh, related to printing ID cards and managing those uh, members. Uh, one thing I do want to just briefly point out uh, is this notion of having uh, the record level security. So the contact record, for example, might be um, uh, visible by all staff members. But what you want to keep as an enrollment person is certain information private. Uh, so what you want to do uh, is access this member record uh, and that member or member profile record, private information that is only visible to the enrollment team. Uh, so this is uh, maybe their age. And you can see most of this data is, is editable, meaning that I'm an enrolled member or an enrollment staff member. I can edit all this data. So this is a design pattern that we've used across the system so that there's public information that maybe the, the rest of the tribal government staff can view, but then private information that only my uh, team or enrollment team or, uh, or the, uh, the family and child services team can view. Uh, so that's an important design guideline that we've used across the system to make sure that data security is important and data protection uh, of their private information uh, is kept at all times. So that's an important aspect to point out. What I want to do now is switch gears and, and we'll take a little bit of time and, and move over to another application that we have. Uh, show you a little bit about the, the fact now I'm switching uh, hats. I'm going to become a family and child services uh, caseworker. Uh, so uh, that's a, 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 an individual that is providing, uh, you know, maybe counseling services or, or ICWA services or uh, other kinds of, of child and uh, protective services uh, and making sure that those, uh, those are being consistently applied to your tribal members, uh, as well as others that are requesting uh, counseling or referral uh, services. So again, you notice that in this case, if I'm that, uh, in that role, I may only have access to this one application, this family wellness application. Uh, so I have a dashboard that allows me to see, you know, the counts of all the, the types of cases or this request for services that have come in. Uh, and on, of those, the, we can track the, the case history, how many have actually come in, on what date, uh, and I can filter and drill into, the, uh, into those records. So it's an important way for me to be able to use this as a, hey, here are the work that I need to do. Uh, I can keep track of this and, and make sure that um, um, I'm seeing the most uh, uh, important tasks that I need to be following up on. Uh, in the system. So I'm using the same uh, contact record. You'll notice that this same list uh, is available here. I'm using the same uh, members of the tribe all. So again, this is a shared record that's being used across uh, the different departments. Well, you'll notice that when I drill into her record, I'm gonna see slightly different information. So you'll notice, for example, I'm seeing this client profile instead of a member profile. Uh, I don't see that member profile because that record is, is confidential to the enrollment team, uh, but for the family and child services team, I have what's called a, a client profile. And the, their, this record uh, is sensitive or has the private information that's only visible to the, the family and child services team. And that may include like the cases uh, that they're involved in, the service requests that they've asked for, incidents that they've been involved in. Uh, so it's a, it's a way to keep this data secured for just the, the family and child services team uh, to make sure that those private records are kept private, as Rob pointed out, uh, to make sure that people that should not have access to this data uh, have only, you know, don't, don't have access. So here's another example. You'll notice it's a little different. I can you capture their income and expense details, and then I can use this as a, as a way to assess their eligibility for different programs. Uh, I can capture their medical providers uh, and see the, the details of who is their dental or preferred pharmacy, who is their medical uh, secondary provider. And so these, again, may be details that your, your team wants to track. But then associated to that, you can have all the service requests. So an example, I can see that history of all those uh, service requests that she has uh, come in for in the past, the date that it was uh, was requested, 
and the type of request uh, that came in uh, and its current status, whether it's new, open, in process or closed, uh, whether it was, uh, where, whether it actually turned into a real case. Uh, so I'll drill in real briefly. This is intended to be uh, a, a, an intake uh, for these types of cases. So that person, you know, Alicia's walking in the door, I can pull up her client profile, see a snapshot, and that's really what this is. You'll see it's all locked. Uh, so I can see a snapshot of her key information that I would need to have visible uh, to make sure that she's eligible for a specific program. So I can pull up her client profile, the date and time that this record was created, its status, what kind of service she's coming in for, uh, and then if this applies to a specific program, uh, whether it be substance abuse or certain type of protective services, I can then associate this service request to that program uh, to assess whether she is eligible uh, to receive those benefits. Uh, and it's pretty obvious that, you know, she needs protective services, needs to be a member, she has met the criteria, and that there's funding, uh, remaining funds available. Uh, so therefore, we would go ahead and, and make a decision uh, to say, yes, we're going to approval needed, no. We're going to say that the requester is eligible, yes. And I can assign, assign uh, uh, at least the service request to one of the caseworkers, and we can say this is approved. And I can approve that as of today. Now, what that does is it's actually going to then create this uh, as a case. So now that's another aspect of this. So there's, there's two different types of cases that we uh, capture in the system. One is I can I have a, a, a case like this where I can track, the, you know, who is the applicant, you know, are they, they, she applied herself, uh, real, what service request it was related to on uh, that status. Uh, so that it may be providing uh, services to her or I can provide services to the entire family. So I'll show you briefly both scenarios. Uh, in this case, you know, we're seeing three, uh, Alicia and her two children. I can capture all the case notes. I can provide uh, mental or, or a different type of assessments uh, related to this case and, and see that progression of those assessments over time. Uh, if there was an incident <clears throat> related to this uh, case, so that way I can keep track of that, maybe this was a domestic violence situation, I can uh, capture that incident record uh, with its related investigation. So I can say who reported it, who are the offenders, uh, if their victim parents are involved, uh, and then I can capture the record of the investigator that went through and, and capture the police report uh, and all the details of the investigation. And then of course, if there's placement situations, so it may be a situation where um, there was a domestic violence situation and the kids were moved into a, a temporary placement, we can keep track of that in the system and, and where they're currently located. Uh, so that's, that's an important element to be able to manage these cases through uh, and, and keep track of them. Plus I can have the ability in the navigation to be able to show a chart and I can use this as a way to, uh, I can show it by status, I can show it by program, uh, I can show it by type and I can, and I, when I click on these, I can actually, um, I can actually, when I click on that section or that portion of the pie, it filters the list of just those cases that fall into that category. So it's a really great interactive tool uh, to be able to uh, capture all the data uh, that is needed for your cases uh, and, and move, that, move those cases forward. Another type of, of case that we might want to track uh, is this notion of a um, of a family plan? So you that's why we call it family wellness uh, because you may be providing uh, services to uh, an individual, or you might want to engage the entire family. So in this case, uh, this is a, a a blue the blue family, and there's some addiction and counseling uh, that you know the 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 dad or the the brother is is running into. Uh, so what I want to be able to do is say at a family level. Let me help me keep track of all the time that the caseworker has spent uh, tracking all the different records and, and activities and case notes, assessments, um, capturing all the, and working with this family. I could summarize all that data here. Uh, and as I enter those records and enter those, um, 
uh, that enter that data into the system. Uh, and then one of the really cool benefits is I can get a plan overview. So not only is this a, a blue, blue family uh, addiction counseling uh, family plan, uh, but I can see all the different members. So they're John, Jeremy, Brooks, and Susan. So you might have Susan is receiving uh, uh, spousal counseling. Uh, Jeremy is working on to become alcohol free and John is working toward becoming alcohol free and noticing the color coding can indicate whether that's overdue or it's coming up uh, so that you can track the color coding and, and see the status. And I can, you'll see that the grid at the bottom shows all the records, but I can click on John's node and I can see just those services that were being provided to John. Uh, so I can filter on these <clears throat> and open up that case note uh, and see the details of that case note. And this could be a discussion. And this is where I track all the time that was spent uh, for this case man providing these services to this individual. And then again, this is where we keep track of any of the assessments and maybe I applied payments uh, that were, you know, providing paying for the services uh, of uh, addiction counseling uh, from a referral or something like that. I can track all the payments that were made on the family's behalf uh, and then associate those payments uh, to this case plan to manage that data. And you can see there's lots of information that goes along with this. One thing I'll, I'll quickly point out uh, is this notion of the program management and being able to uh, track uh, each of these programs, uh, capture the budget amount, the start and end date, so that you can, on an annual basis, uh, create these programs, make them effective, and when the, the remaining funds are used up, uh, we can then say, okay, this, this uh, program becomes inactive, uh, so that you can either uh, define the criteria for eligibility to say, you know, is it, must they be a member, can they be a family member, or can they be anybody? Uh, must they be a specific tribe or must they be in a family group? Uh, and is there an age restriction or gender restriction uh, for these individuals? So there's multiple different ways to define the criteria around this program and assessing their eligibility. Uh, so that's a really strong uh, capability to manage the assistance and your programs that you're making available to your tribal members. Uh, and then these can be made available uh, through your core applications. I'm now gonna switch gears and, and just briefly touch on uh, tribal court. Uh, again, this is uh, another application that's available uh, and it's one of the newest applications uh, that we're, we're publishing. Uh, so we can have a couple different dashboards, one for the clerk and one for the judge. Uh, it's intended for those cases uh, so that you can actually track those cases uh, through from, uh, the initiation being that I can track the status as being open or closed, what, oops, uh, and what the, the disposition of this court case might be, uh, moving that through the process. Uh, and then I can track all the case types. And these are intended to be uh, flexible lists of case types uh, that you can adjust to match the case types of your uh, tribal uh, court manages. Uh, so you can move those through and, and then keep track of all your case notes, track who are the parties to this case. So I can assess whether they're defendant, uh, the plaintiff, or just the attorney uh, attorney for the plaintiff or defendant. I can capture all those records uh, here, capture all the, the hearings uh, related to this, or I can see it in a list view, or I can switch over and, and view this in a calendar view uh, to be able to see that, okay, here's, a, here's that court case that was scheduled for last uh, Thursday. Uh, uh, and, and I can then capture the deep documents and mail those out to those individuals that are involved in that hearing uh, so they can make sure that they can show up uh, and add that to their Outlook calendar uh, to, to move that forward. Uh, and then of course, you know, through that disposition, if there's charges that come out of it, uh, if he was involved in a, a theft case and there was a plea bargain, uh, if there were fines or fees that were assessed levied against him, uh, we can track those fines and fees and actually track the payment uh, of those. So you can, once you see that, okay, uh, Adam owes $5,000, uh, I can then track those payments that he has made over time uh, and when those payments were made and, and capture, okay, here was the original fine amount. He's paid a total of $650 and that's the amount that's due. 
so that is an important element to be able to provide this capability to manage all of those fines and fees and the repayment of the, uh, the restitution uh, of those fees uh, in the system. So this is a, a great tool to, that allows uh, your tribal court teams uh, to manage your hearings. Uh, they can use us in a, in a flexible way um, to, to track all the different events that are going on uh, and assign you know, those court cases that are, are related to a specific judge or a specific uh, mul maybe multiple uh, court uh, uh, courtrooms uh, so that you can make sure you're not overbooking an individual or a room. Uh, so there's some great capabilities here with this system uh, to allow that case management uh, capability within your uh, application. With that, I'm going to switch then to the final uh, piece, uh, which is the portal. So this is the, the portal that's visible or available uh, to your tribal members so that they can uh, sign in and manage their data uh, themselves. I'll briefly sign in. Uh, and again, this is available through a, a web browser. Uh, there's an authentication method uh, where those individual members can log in using uh, credentials so it's secured uh, through a multiple different approaches that can be, uh, that can be set up for your environment, uh, which allow us to uh, expose your records or this tribal member's records. So I'm going to log in as Alicia. And what this does <clears throat> is then it presents uh, the information that is her private information. Uh, so maybe you're exposing uh, my profile. I can pull up my profile records, uh, but I can also take different actions. I can update my address. I can update my household, submit an address change request, uh, or I can change my primary email. Uh, there's multiple different ways to maintain my profile uh, of, of services. And I can also look at my service requests. Uh, and if needed, I can open those up and publish them or, or add. I can edit those. Uh, edit that service request so I can see the status uh, after I've submitted it uh, and I can add comments or add documents to, for supporting comment or supporting documentation related to these cases. But then I can also through this system uh, provide applications. So just a brief example of an application. Uh, so I can create this new application um, and this could be you know an education program. It could be assistance, it could be multiple different things. Uh, so this could be higher education. Uh, we can just type these uh, information in here and we'll see that this, uh, I need assistance for school. And I'll save that uh, as an education application. And now, uh, it, and that, that's a wizard-like interface. And these, this is something that we would uh, expose to your uh, members or model these pages specific to your requirements. Uh, proof of registration, you ha they have to upload and choose uh, their documents that they're going to include uh, for this. Uh, so they can upload those documents, uh, submit that, and, and once that's done, uh, it drops into the system. And I can certify that I'm typing, you know, this, this is me and we support that uh, electronic signature capability. So I'm certifying that it's me and I'm submitting that uh, application. So I can click on that uh, and see all those new applications that were submitted uh, in the system and, and those will be associated to myself after it's been approved. Uh, so the, the portal is a great way uh, for you to expose those services to your members. And then finally, I wanna quickly just show you an example uh, that this can then be in, in the collaboration with the Office 365 and Teams. Uh, you know, for your members, if you have a, a team channel, if you're using Microsoft Teams today, uh, you can actually not only ex access these applications through uh, the browser directly, but if you've got team members that are using Microsoft Teams, uh, you could actually come in here to one of the channels in that team, and granted that individual needs access to that, uh, that team, I can pull up this uh, pull up this page and see all the enrollment uh, information, or I can see uh, the application for the family wellness and see all that same information that I can see through the browser. I can open up Teams and have access to that same same data through that interface. So there's 
this is an example of how we use these tools uh, very carefully and very easily uh, navigate through not only Teams, but also exporting through exporting data through Excel uh, or making Word templates to run ex export data in, into uh, formatted output files uh, that, that meet your specific requirements. So there's, there's some great capabilities and that's part of the reason why we picked this as a platform for, for Tribal Platform 4.0. So with that, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I know I'm running a little bit long here. I'll switch back to uh, our slides. So uh, with that, I just wanted to remind everyone that we've got an upcoming webinar uh, this Thursday uh, related to uh, monetizing and securing your tribal operations with cloud managed services. Uh, so that's a new offering and a new uh, webinar that we'll, you can register for. I think uh, Joanne will be posting the link uh, to that uh, webinar in the chat. So you can pull that up and, and register for that next webinar coming up in a, in a couple days. So with that, if there's any questions uh, that anyone has, uh, they can post those in the chat uh, and uh, Joanne will read those for us. Or if you, Joanne can, if you would like to raise your hand, uh, what we can do is, is make you a speaker and then you can ask your question. Do we have any questions at this time? Uh, no hands are being raised, but we'll give we'll give it a minute and see if um, okay. anybody has any questions. I know that was a really fast walkthrough of all the different applications, and and you know if you definitely want to see more or there was something that you like, you like to spend a little more time with your team, please don't hesitate to reach out to us, and we will schedule some time so you can do a deeper dive. Uh, to one of the applications that you'd like to, to see, read more about. Yes, thank you. That was an excellent presentation. All right. Well, we're up with our time, so I wanted to thank everyone for attending uh, and oh. listening, uh, staying with us. You got a question? Uh, we did have one question that came through. Okay. Uh, you presented a lot of applications. Which ones are included? So it's it's really an a la carte. Uh, so we, you we essentially tell you tell us uh, we we recommend that you start with the enrollment application. We get the the base um, tribal member data uh, migrated from whatever system you're using today into the enrollment system, and from that point on, then you can pick and choose which applications you can use uh, from there. Uh, so typically, if you uh, what we found some tribes want just the enrollment and the portal. Uh, so we've deployed that combination for some tribes. Other tribes, we've started with enrollment and we've gone to family wellness or enrollment and uh, tribal court. Uh, we've done multiple different combinations of those applications. Uh, so it's, it's really up to, you know, after you start with that enrollment core application, then it's deciding what is that, you know, most uh, urgent need uh, for your tribal government to be able to utilize some of these applications uh, and we will work with you to, to work out a timeline uh, for transition uh, and migrating the data from your current legacy system uh, into the tribal platforms environment. Great question. Great, thank you. Uh, okay, another one just came in. How do the tribes work together with the, da with the data? Have you had any problems? The tribes work together with the data. So the, the one reason we picked Dynamics 365 and Azure, uh, it does keep the data secure. Uh, and so you don't have to worry about data backups, uh, data, uh, you know, always available. Uh, that's one of the reasons is Microsoft has a full-time dedicated administrative staff that's protecting the data, doing the backups, uh, making sure that the services are always available for your teams. Uh, so we've not had any issues with the data itself, and we, you know, if if uh, a record uh, gets uh, accidentally uh, deleted or a change was made accidentally, uh, I didn't actually show it, but there's a notion of what's called audit hit trail or audit history uh, that allows you to be able to go into that audit history, see what changes were made, by who and when, uh, and actually uh, recover those uh, changes on a record by record basis. So there's, a, we've never had a situation where we've had to go back to an old backup because the data was corrupted in some specific way uh, that was not usable, never happened. 
uh, we are always able to go in and target, uh, specifically fix those records uh, that were changed or got uh, uh, were the edits were done incorrectly and recover those uh, recover that data uh, from the system. So that, that's why we've chosen this because the tools that are available to us help us maintain and preserve that data for you and your members uh, and your staff uh, to make sure that it's always available. Yeah, I just want to add, Brian. It were they talking about tribes communicating with other tribes or are they talking about pro, um, programs communicating with each other, like different departments? Right, it's mostly for different departments, mostly different yeah. departments being able to communicate, not necessarily tribe to tribe. Uh, if I if I mentioned that, that was, mis that was a mistake on my part. It was really the, the, the departments being able to um, inter interact and work together uh, to deliver those services yeah. for those members. Yep, they also did say, um, thank you, Kevin, um, for asking the question. He was referring to different departments in our tribe gets different funding, so a lot of times they purchase their own systems. Right, and that's, that's, a, that's a common scenario, uh, and that's where, you know, the family wellness uh, would be a great place to start to be able to capture uh, all and you know, give them specific access to uh, be able to uh, manage their programs and eligibility, whether they be financial programs, uh, counseling referrals per services or training and those kind of things you can manage all those programs uh, and those funds through that uh, that family wellness application uh, yeah. to give you access to that I'll tell you also Kevin that you know we do run in a situation where tribes are you know have those different departments with different funding and you know basically we demo to all of them so listen enrollment energy you know other programs we demo the solution and they pull their resources or pull their funding together to go just with one. Because it makes sense. I mean, if you have your data, like I said, in one place, it's not gonna be corrupted, it's not gonna be stolen, it's not gonna be tacked, you know, and everybody can just pull from it. It's not like you have to have a file and share files around like, like the old days. The file is right. on your computer at all times. Yep, and that's the key thing is protect the data, keep it in a central location so that it's, it's very secured and, and available to all the people that need it. Yeah. And this is a Microsoft product. We just tribalized it to fit tribes, but it's, mm -hmm. it comes with all the power and support of Microsoft behind it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a good point, Rob, is that we do offer an Arctic Ascent support agreement with this. Uh, so you, you get the, not only the software subscription for the licenses that you need, uh, but, you know, just for the number of seats that you need. So it isn't a, um, a big one-time upfront purchase. Uh, we come in, do an implementation, uh, do the data migration from your current system to the to travel platform 4.0. And then from that point on, uh, our Arctic Ascent support team uh, takes over and works with you. Um, as you know, issues come up, uh, you can contact them and they will work through, troubleshoot what the issue is. Uh, and if our team can't uh, resolve the issue, then we can actually escalate to Microsoft on your behalf uh, and work through the resolution of that. So that's that's one of the reasons why you choose Arctic IT uh, as your partner of choice because uh, we've got this deep experience in in tribal country, uh, tribal organizations such as yourselves, and be able to uh, work with Microsoft in a very close relationship to make sure that we're providing that best service to you. Mm -hmm. And also want to add to Brian, one, a lot of the questions that we get, you know, how much work does our staff have to do to get this done? And, you know, I, I'll just mention that most tribes, you know, because it was the first to have Progeny as their enrollment software, we do have tools that automatically bring the data from Progeny to this system seamlessly. So the only thing your staff would pretty much be responsible for is making sure that the data was current or clean, at least, but it's a pretty easy process. Um, I just wanted to get that out there so you wouldn't think yeah. you'd have to have a lot of work to do. And we provide, you know, training for your team, and and we're continuing to work on providing more uh, training for the future, such as access to these webinars uh, and other training opportunities, so that your staff can stay current on how to use all the features within these applications. Yeah, and this is, you know, just to add to this is an eligible spend under these under the um, COVID relief funds. You can use uh, use it for um, technology improvements. That's one question we also get in foil. Yep, great point, Rob. Great. Any other questions? Um, no other questions. Okay. Okay. Well, I thank everyone for attending and uh, attending yeah. the webinar, and I appreciate your attention. And if again, if you can contact uh, uh, connect at arcticit.com, 
or reach out to Rob and, and we will get uh, get started with uh, scheduling a one-on-one a -on -one demo or a meeting so that you can learn more about Travel Platform 4.0. So thank you. Thanks Great. everybody Thanks so much. Thanks for joining really us.